A struct is a construct that is almost identical to a class. The major difference is that structs are value type objects, while classes are reference type objects. This means that when you pass a struct object to a method, the method will receive a copy of the object and won't be able to make changes to it outside the method. It is usually best to use classes instead of structs, as there are many features of classes that aren't supported by struct objects. For example, a struct cannot have a constructor method without any arguments, and a struct cannot extend another class, nor can a class extend a struct. You will learn about extending classes in Lesson 5.1. Besides the limitations of struct as opposed to class, the only difference between the two is that structs are value type objects, while classes are reference type objects. This means that struct objects are stored in the stack, whereas class objects are stored in the heap. For more on this, see Lesson 4.1. Because struct objects are stored in the stack, they will generally be processed slightly faster than class objects. It's best to avoid using large structs, as there is a limited amount of space in the stack. You should only use structs for small constructs that need to be accessed quickly. To begin this lesson, open the Mathland project from your Sample Files folder. And open Sequences.aspx in Design View. When this page is finished, it will display various mathematical sequences when the button is clicked. Now open sequences.cs. Note that this isn't the code behind file for sequences.aspx, but is a separate class file. This class calculates the mathematical sequences for sequences.aspx. It isn't the most efficient code, but it's a good example to demonstrate the difference between structs and classes. First, let's examine the existing code. The Mathematical Sequences class is the most important part of this code. In a moment, you're going to change it into a struct. The Populate Sequences method accepts a Mathematical Sequences object as an argument and populates its properties appropriately. Now change the Mathematical Sequences class into a struct. To do this, simply replace private class Mathematical Sequences with private struct Mathematical Sequences. Structs are defined in exactly the same way as classes, but using the struct keyword instead of class. Now test the page by opening sequences.aspx and clicking Debug Start Debugging. Now click Get Sequence and an error occurs. This error indicates that the sequences.arithmetic sequence property is null. This happened because the populate sequences method failed to add the mathematical sequences to the object. This is because structs are value type objects. You learned about value type objects in lesson 4.1. The populate sequences method only received a copy of the sequences object, so it was unable to place any persistent values into its properties. Stop debugging now, and you're going to fix the error by using the ref keyword. 
return to sequences.cs and change the line that begins the populate sequences method to private void populate sequences ref mathematical sequences object to populate by adding the ref keyword you're explicitly telling the method that the object to populate argument should be sent by reference. Now open the code behind file of sequences.aspx and you can see that the code that calls the populate sequences method is marked with an error. That's because you also need to use the ref keyword when you call the method. Change the line that's marked with an error to populate sequences ref sequences. You learned about the ref keyword in lesson 4.1. View sequences.aspx in your browser now. And click get sequence. This time the sequence is returned without any problems. You've successfully modified the code to use a struct instead of a class. I recommend avoiding structs, as classes are generally a better solution. However, it isn't possible to pass a class object by value, so you may find a struct more appropriate if there's a special need to do this. Close your web browser now and close Visual Studio. You've now completed Lesson 4.2 Create a Struct.